Hello, I'm Dr. Jay Holman, the founder of Mamre Christian Bible College, and we are presenting to you messages given as companion pieces to our classes, but you can also listen to these as standalone. For season three of The Fountain, I am sharing reflections from many years in ministry, at least over the last 20. The reflections consist of titles with scriptures, dreams, and journaling from the Lord, in addition to prophetic words and sermons from my missionary trips to Africa, Europe, and Jamaica. It's narrated by a friend of the podcast, and I pray that these reflections will bless and encourage your hearts during this season. If you're interested in more of our lessons in the Word of God or to register for classes, please check our website at www.mcbcollege.com for the upcoming course schedule. You can also watch us on YouTube. Enjoy. This reflection is titled, The Hidden Man. Man is a three-part being. He's a spirit who has a soul which lives in a body. It's the spirit of men that has been renewed in Christ. The work that Christ accomplished on the cross was so that mankind could come back to God in the way he intended from the very beginning. Genesis 1.27, English Standard Version. So God created man in his own image. In the image of God, he created him. Male and female, he created them. It's the Holy Spirit in us that leads us into all truth. That word truth is interpreted as reality. It's the Holy Spirit that should lead a Christian. Love is a product of the Holy Spirit. We are told this in Galatians 5. Galatians 5, 22-23, English Standard Version. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, self-control. Against such things there is no law. Because we have the Spirit of God in us, the nature of Father God is love, and because He lives in us, we cannot have a deep faith life without a love life. Our birth was not a mental or physical birth, it was a spiritual birth. John 3, 3 3-8, English Standard Version. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear it sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Every Christian is reborn of the God's Spirit. Man's spirit took on the new nature of God. However, the five senses that mankind walks in on the earth is predicated upon what happened after the fall in the garden. The five senses, hearing, seeing, touching, taste, smell, are the teacher and educator of the human brain. The brain cannot function without the senses. Mankind uses his five senses, but if you are born again in Christ, those reborn are alive within their spirit, which is based on our position with God in Christ Jesus. 2 Corinthians 5.17, English Standard Version. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. Colossians 3.10, English Standard Version. And have put on the new self, which is being renewed in knowledge after the image of its creator. Ephesians 4.23, English Standard Version. And to be renewed in the spirit of your minds. As Christians, we are a new creation in Christ Jesus. It's a new self that we must walk in. The sin nature is replaced with a new nature, and our new self is born of love. When we begin to walk in love, practice the word, and walk with Father God, we are walking in our true nature, which is God's love. Our selfishness is replaced with a heart of love. God lives in us by his Holy Spirit, and that hidden man of the heart, the reborn spirit in us. 1 Peter 3, 3 3-4 English Standard Version Do not let your adorning be external, the braiding of hair and the putting on of gold jewelry or the clothing you wear, but let your adorning be the hidden person of the heart with the imperishable beauty of a gentle and quiet spirit, which in God's sight is very precious. The word hidden is also rendered inwardly. It signifies that a Christian is one on the inside in contrast to the one who is merely one outwardly. Every Christian should allow their reborn spirit to have full reign in their life. 
The five senses or the five servants of the body should follow the new man, which is the real man. 2 Corinthians 5, 14-15, English Standard Version. For the love of Christ controls us, because we have concluded this, that one has died for all, therefore all have died, and he died for all, that those who live might no longer live for themselves, but for him who for their sake died and was raised. 2 Corinthians 5, 17-19 speaks of reconciliation of the heart. 2 Corinthians 5, 17-19, English Standard Version. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old has passed away. Behold, the new has come. All this is from God, who through Christ reconciled us to himself and gave us the ministry of reconciliation. That is, in Christ God was reconciling the world to himself, not counting their trespasses against them and entrusting to us the message of reconciliation. God's love for us should move every believer. Ephesians 2, 4-7, English Standard Version. But God, being rich in mercy, because of the great love with which he loved us, even when we were dead in our trespasses, made us alive together with Christ. By grace you have been saved, and raised us up with him, and seated us with him in the heavenly places in Christ Jesus, so that in the coming ages he might show the immeasurable riches of his grace and kindness towards us in Christ Jesus. Our spirit man, that hidden man of the heart, is eternal. It's a part which will determine where we spend eternity. Romans 6, 3-11, English Standard Version. Do you not know that all of us who have been baptized into Christ Jesus were baptized into his death? We were buried therefore with him by baptism into death, in order that, just as Christ was raised from the dead by the glory of the Father, we too might walk in newness of life. For if we have been united with him in a death like his, we shall certainly be united with him in a resurrection like his. We know that our old self was crucified with him in order that the body of sin might be brought to nothing, so that we would no longer be enslaved to sin. For one who has died has been set free from sin. Now if we have died with Christ, we believe that we will also live with him. We know that Christ, being raised from the dead, will never die again. Death no longer has dominion over him. For the death he died, he died to sin, once for all. But the life he lives, he lives to God. So you also must consider yourselves dead to sin and alive to God in Christ Jesus. We share in Christ's death, burial, and life and ascension. When he rose, we rose with him. Our former self was nailed to the cross with Jesus, the old man, that old spirit. As believers, we walk in the newness of life, Romans 6, 4. The Spirit communicates with us through the five senses. We must practice and live this love life for our minds to be renewed. Romans 12, 2, English Standard Version. Do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewal of your mind, that by testing you may discern what is the will of God, what is good and acceptable and perfect. 2 Corinthians 5, 13. There are two great forces in this world, love and selfishness, eternal life and spiritual death. I am sick of my selfishness should be every believer's mantra. Those two forces, love and selfishness, are in the world, but that love is a natural love, so we must have Jesus' kind of love, which comes by the renewal of our minds. Romans 5.8, English Standard Version. But God shows his love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. Romans 12, 9-10, English Standard Version. Let love be genuine. Abhor what is evil, hold fast to what is good, love one another with brotherly affection, outdo one another in showing honor. So what does it take to demonstrate our hidden man to others? Thank you for joining us. Tune in next time for part two of The Hidden Man.